The hands say a lot about what's going on inside a person. Is that eye movement normal? He seems restless. Should I tell someone? The number of cigarette butts is inversely proportional to my hours of sleep. Ah, damn. See? There's no fever whatsoever. He must be having a nightmare. Are you sure? Wouldn't you have nightmares too, after what he went through yesterday? I know I sure wouldn't sleep. I have nightmares myself, but those go way back. Oh, the poor thing. Do you know what my nightmare is? It's that, that witch I have to work with. Oh, good thing she's got trauma surgery at 12.30, but I wish it were a little sooner, you know? Anyway, thank you for letting me know. And, and, and for bringing him in. You don't know how excited I am to be involved in a criminal case. It might not be important, but I need to take a look at his medical report. No, the footprints don't match. If Yale killed Dunn, he did it without stepping in the paint or in different shoes. Hi. You're awake, handsome? They ran several tests on Bobby Yale last night after admitting him. Have the results come in yet? Hmm, no, I don't think so, handsome.
It seems like the Doe nurse will be assisting Dr. Talbot during his 12.30 surgery. In four hours. Could I get them to operate any sooner? Jim, Sheikh Ostiambi speaking. Jake, it's Blackside. I just wanted to... I have work to do, John. Call you later. Ronald, get on that ring! Hi, Ray. Uh, hi. Good morning. Take a guess. I already gave you a clue. I know your name, so... So, so, uh, 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 I don't know. That means I'm a detective. No, wait. My Uncle John is a real detective. He's way cooler than you. Wait a minute. You, you're Uncle John. Uncle John, I guessed it. I'm a detective, too. Mom, it's Uncle John. I guessed it. You got me, Ray. Congrats. What did I win? Hmm. What do you want? I want... A gun! Bang, bang, bang! Bang, bang! Good guys don't carry guns, Ray. You know why? Because they always end up shooting someone. I got a client today, but uh, business is a bit slow lately. Sorry to hear that, but we always land on our feet, don't we? <laughs> yeah, can't argue with that. Hey, we're kind of in a hurry. Ray's got a dentist appointment. I'll call you soon, okay? I'm really sorry. Sure. One last thing. Ray, hurry up. We have to go. Have you heard from Dad lately? Get Dr. Gregor Talbot, please. Yes, one minute. Um, no, actually, Dr. Talbot won't be in until 12.30, according to my registry. Can I ask who's calling, please? Sherry, this is Dr. Talbot. We have to reschedule the 12.30 procedure. I want everyone in the operating room in five minutes. If anyone gives you any grief, tell them it's a matter of life or death. Understood?
A matter of life and death. A matter of life and death. You gotta be kidding me. These people. something that you have. Oh. Only if you guess why I'm giving it to you. You want to help me solve a criminal investigation. Well, aren't you smart? But be quick about it. You hear me, huh? If that witch comes back... What does it say here? Ah, you know doctors. The top handwriting is mine. Let's see. Extra systole and dehydration caused by panic attack. Extra what? You know, arrhythmia, like skipped heartbeats. What about this here? It's a good thing I know that Mr. Yale is in Dr. Ferguson's hands. Otherwise, I'd be worried. Hey, no means no, miss. You really don't know who I am, do you? Miss, I've got orders. And the fact is, those orders say that... There you are, Miss Dunn. Huh? Tell him, Black Sad. I can't get through that thick skull of his. You see, hi, Phil. She's the owner of Yale's gym. A woman? Whether the kid recovers or not depends entirely on her. Between you and me, and all due respect, miss, but aren't we taking this woman's liberation a little too far? All right, let her in, but she's your responsibility. Thanks for convincing the cop. To be honest, I still don't know why I did it. But here we are. Anyway, you did your job. I'll send you a check the day after the fight. You can leave now. No! No! Why did you say that? Anyway, you did your job. I'll send you a check the day after the fight. You can leave now. No! No! Why did you say that? Anyway, you did your job. I'll send you a check the day after the fight. You can leave now. Oh, no. She's gonna do something stupid. Sonia. Don't. You killed my father. You said so yourself. You can't take justice into your own hands. Believe me, it will haunt you as long as you live. He almost killed you in that floozy's apartment. How could he not be guilty? Your father wouldn't want you to do this. He was a just man, and this is not justice. Shut up! None of that matters! How could he not be guilty? Since nothing else is working, it's time to bluff it. You know I emptied that gun when I found it in the safe. No! 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 Why did you say that?
Sonya, don't. You killed my father. You said so yourself. Your father wouldn't want you to do this. He was a just man, and this is not justice. He almost killed you in that floozy's apartment. How could he not be guilty? Your father sacrificed everything to pay your way through college. If you do this, you'll destroy the future your father wanted you to have. Shut up! None of that matters! How could he not be guilty? All right, shoot. I'll arrest you myself. Are you that eager to rot in prison? It's okay. <clears throat> Uncle Tim! Sweetie, I came back from Los Angeles as soon as I could. I told you not to rush back. Come on now, honey. Aren't you going to introduce me to your friend? No, this is John Blacksad, the detective who found Bobby. Oh, so this is strictly professional. I thought you had some good news for your uncle. No, Uncle Tim. Don't be silly. Don't be silly? Look at you. Smart, educated, as dazzling as the brightest of stars. Every single man in this city should be at your feet. Come on. We'd better let him rest. Hmm. I see. Let's say you're right and Bobby Yale is innocent. Who should we focus on now? We? Well, your father turned down my money. But he made me promise one thing. That I'd take care of you if anything happened to him. But I can... I know you're perfectly capable of managing that gym on your own. But we don't even know if he'll be ready to fight Stone. Besides... Someone seems really invested in stopping that fight. And someone has to pay Mr. Blacksad to get to the bottom of all this. Please, talk some sense into her. Your uncle is right. Your father wouldn't have wanted you to go through this alone. See? Listen to the detective. All right. Thank you, uncle. Thank you so much. All right. Stop crying or you'll ruin your makeup, honey. Now fix yourself up and I'll buy you some breakfast. Uh, wait, my purse. I'll get it. It must be- Black said, wait a minute. I think she needs some time alone, just like you and me. Listen, boy, do whatever it takes to find Joe's murder. Whatever it takes. If things get messy, don't worry. I'll clean them up. Deal? Sure. I'll do my best. Thank you. I trust you to get that ball to the end zone. No. Are you telling stories about the great iron arm again? Wait a minute. Of course. The Milestone's quarterback. Tim Iron Arm <laughs> Thorpe. <laughs> it's a good thing folks usually recognize me sooner. Black said, you coming to breakfast? I'd love to, but I have to go ask for a favor. The investigation required that I ask Jake for a small favor. Or demand it, if worse came to worst.
This one's got extra padding, just like Jake. How many hits does a boxer take to the head throughout his career? Hey, hi. Hey, focus, will ya? I hope he never feels inclined to hit me. He's twice my size. Not the smartest cookie in the jar, nor the most tactful. But do I trust him? No. Do I consider him a friend? Yes. He's been training with those same shorts for who knows how long. Hey, Jake. Not now, John. Hey, Jake. I said not now. Hey, Jake. I said not now. That lizard isn't Yale's doctor.
The racist's brain is so full of hatred that there's no space for trifles such as common sense or, say, spelling. But this most cultured writer spotted the error and attempted to correct it, not sure what to make of the outcome. All right, that's enough. <clears throat> Take five. Go on. What, John? What's so important? Why are you coaching that guy? Oh, that's right. You don't know. Sonya asked me to run the gym. Well, at least the fun part. As soon as Bobby yells back on his feet, I'll turn him into a champ. I'll make him crush stone. Just you wait. What? Why are you looking at me like that? Is it the first time you coached anyone? Yeah, but uh, you think I can't do this, don't you? Well, screw you. We'll win that fight. Have you noticed anything strange about Sonya? I don't know. Yesterday she said she hated the gym. But it also seemed like she wanted to save the place. Do you get any of this? I sure don't. The gym is paying her way through college and she still has a year left. I guess she doesn't have any other option. Could you tell me where Old Erie's headquarters are? Uh, what for? No, no, no. You could get me into trouble. No way. You lied to me yesterday. And being the good friend that I am, I kept your secret. You owe me. I don't think I'd keep protecting you if we weren't friends. Although, if we were friends, you wouldn't hesitate to help me. Tell me, Jake, are we friends or not? Damned cat. All right. O'Leary's hideout is in the basement of a Chinese restaurant. But I don't even know how to get in. Well, I'll see you tonight. Wait, were we supposed to meet? Of course. Your place, 11 p.m. See you there. Ronald! The break's over. After 30 hours of work and several beatings, every bone in my body ached for a bed. Now it's my turn. So I went home to recharge. <clears throat> because the night ahead was bound to be promising. What do you know about that basement? Well... Let me think. Not then. Come on, Jake, for Christ's sake. I'm running out of threats to get you talking, Jake. And frankly, I don't want things to get violent. I've come to get O'Leary several times, but they always make me wait in the dining room. One day it was so late that the restaurant was closed. They made me call from a payphone in that alley over there to let him know I was here. A few minutes later, O'Leary came out the back door. That red one there. All right. You stay by the payphone. Wait till I'm inside. If you see anyone, call the same number you did that one time. Let it ring twice and hang up. Got it? Screw you! A promising night indeed.
know. The plan will only work if Valeri doesn't know I've been here. Would he even notice if I got in? <laughs> I'm guessing it lights up when they ring at the main door. Does he need a shotgun to deal with suppliers? Something tells me he'd notice me no matter how stuffy he was. <laughs> Stupid coyote! Maybe it leads to the basement. <laughs> Stupid rabbit! <laughs> Stupid cat! Or maybe this is the way to the basement and not that corridor. <laughs> Stupid rabbit! bit too high to climb if the basement I'm looking for were in that building. Could it be an elevator shaft? How does this thing open? What happened? Should we run for it? Do I look like I'm in a hurry? There's a guy watching TV inside the restaurant. A red panda, I think. Doesn't ring a bell. I don't recall any panda waiters. Are you done? What do you think? I've seen two possible ways to access the basement, but... You really think I can help you with that? What's taking you so long? You want to switch places? Check out that graffiti. You're in On Leon Tong territory. Wow, I thought the Tong Wars had ended years ago. Maybe someone nostalgic just got bored. Damn Chinese mafias. Yeah, American mafias are infinitely better, no doubt. There's a trap door on the ground, right by the restaurant. Does that sound familiar? Huh? The... The restaurant or the trap door? Okay. Forget it. I need you to go to the front door and ring the bell. Alright, is there a bar in that alley? Have you been drinking? Count to 30, ring the bell, then run for the car. Got it? Whoa, you better send a bunch of Italians my way after this. So, now what are you gonna do? I'll open the door with my lockpicks. Once I'm in, I'm still not sure if I'll take the hall or the door on the right.
better send a bunch of Italians my way after this. So, now what are you gonna do? I'll open the door with my lockpicks. Once I'm in, I'm still not sure if I'll take the hall or the door on the right. The lock on that door was not your standard model. I had to give it my all. send a bunch of Italians my way after this. So, now what are you gonna do? I'll open the door with my lockpicks. Once I'm in, I'm still not sure if I'll take the hall or the door on the right. The lock on that door was not your standard model. I had to give it my all. You better send a bunch of Italians my way after this. So, now what are you gonna do? I'll open the door with my lockpicks. Once I'm in, I'm still not sure if I'll take the hall or the door on the right. The lock on that door was not your standard model. I had to give it my all. Oh, no, no, 
no, no, no, not now! Some answers only come to you when it's far too late. No, 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 not now! Some answers only come to you when it's far too late. I was expecting some frozen bodies. Hmm.
Hmm. There's one on each table, except this one. The odds are incredibly in Stone's favor. I guess that he's the reigning champion, and Bobby Yale is just a contender, but maybe word got out about his condition. Wow, I didn't realize you could place so many bets on a single baseball game. Does O'Leary have a network of pals? A little thing on the jig that adds on its own. What will they think of next? Looks like a summary of all the bets that come in. Day, amount, bet, wagerer. Wait a minute. Did O'Leary himself bet five grand on Yale? Hmm. Sometimes I forget that criminals, even the office variety, have family and kids. Anyway, maybe things aren't so bad on the dark side. 16 days until the fight. I'd say that's Ireland, too. A Crossler? The good news is, I don't need lockpicks to open it. The bad news, I didn't bring explosives. Even Dunn had a gun in his office. O'Leary couldn't possibly be the exception. Dunn had $200 in his safe. O'Leary had about 20000 in a drawer. Ireland, of course. This guy's obsessed.
painting concealed file after file of celebrity reports with all sorts of shady information, ranging from S to Z. Almost all of them were athletes. Is that what O'Leary meant when he said that detectives and police officers were his friends? I wonder how many spy for him. If I were to pitch in, who would I spy on? In Bobby Yale's folder, all I found was a log of his incredible stats as an aspiring champion. 20 victories, 16 by knockout. Although, at the end of the report, someone had underlined one word several times. Untouchable. According to Stone's report, he was so clean, not to mention hard to corrupt, that O'Leary opted for a more subtle strategy. Apparently, when he broke up with the tennis player Helen Moore, he set her up with Stone. Lucky for him, they hit it off. As I put away the report, I stopped in my tracks. Did I really want to risk knowing what O'Leary had on my good friend? the incorruptible police commissioner? To be honest, if Smirnov had anything to hide, I'd rather not know about it. Thorpe had been a rising football star before the war, which he came back from with honors and decorations. After the truce, he resumed his career he won three season trophies and a couple of MVP awards. He retired after an accident that left him paralyzed from the waist down. He started his own sports advertising agency four years ago, but according to the files, O'Leary hadn't even tried to corrupt him. If they're not together anymore, why does O'Leary keep so many pictures of romantic moments with Helen Moore? Limited edition copy two of three. We listen, if you call it listening, to the sentimental romance. Your eyes act like the moon. Strange as it may seem, the reports reveal that O'Leary had hired Jake as a bodyguard precisely because he was absolutely clean. Apparently, he liked to surround himself with honest people when he mingled with the high society. Helen Moore's file was, by far, one of the juiciest. She had been just a run-of-the-mill tennis player until O'Leary launched her career by rigging enough games to help her climb the ranking. However, O'Leary hadn't fixed any of her games in over a year. In spite of that, she remained undefeated. Be as it may, it was clear that O'Leary had enough information to ruin her career.
I hope I never become the object of O'Leary's obsession. I'd say O'Leary has threatened Stone with ruining Moore's career. Luckily or not, Files in through R included no one that I could somehow connect to the case. Dunn's integrity was legendary, even in O'Leary's shady reports, just like Yale had said. Dunn had kicked one of O'Leary's men out of the gym when he found him snooping around. Cassidy's report was possibly the longest among all of O'Leary's files. Apparently, their rivalry went way back, so much so that they spied on each other in the most unthinkable ways. At least I was able to confirm what Yale had told me. Cassidy had threatened Dunn after he refused to join the manager's union. father was the shortest of all, since only his name was left. Why? Jake. Someone was coming. Are we or are we not exemplary workers, Jim? Here it is, middle of the night. Jake. Someone was coming. Are we or are we not exemplary workers, Jim? Here it is, middle of the night. And we're working extra hours.
Hey, Jimmy, what do you think about that? I think he's scared stiff, Desmond. <laughs> Why's that, Jimmy? We're giving you the red carpet treatment. We even let you in the boss's office. You're one lucky fellow. <laughs> you can't say I don't treat you well, Jimmy. <laughs> Yeah. Speak, you moron. Yeah, yeah, uh, uh, very well. Uh, why are you... Shh, c c calm down. How long have you worked for me, Jimmy? Three, 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 three months, three months. Oh, yeah. I hired you right after your cousin Martin died. I need your opinion. How would you punish someone for ruining an innocent man's life with a hit and run, Jimmy? I, I don't know. And tell me, what about you, Wilson? What would you do? No, please, please, please. I didn't do anything, I swear. He was a good guy. <laughs> of course, you already knew that. You knew him better than me, right? <laughs> He was my cousin! I... That's why I hired you, Jimmy. You see, Martin was a dear friend. And his widow said you were a nice kid. That you'd do a good job. And you needed the money. And I... I have a soft spot for those in need. Please. But, uh... You know what? I talked to her just yesterday. She told us you did some naughty things to her with that gun, Jimmy. No, no, no. That's no way to treat a widow, is it? <laughs> She's lying. Why would I do that? What about the kid? <laughs> Are you so sure you know how long a kid can hold his breath? With his little head inside a toilet bowl? Son of a bitch. I didn't want to. It was his idea. Selfishly, I was glad I hadn't risked my life to save Jimmy. Maybe not even someone like him deserves to die. But one could also argue that I didn't deserve to die for someone like him. Who's your boss? Give me a name! Cassidy. It was his idea. He said you'd hired me if I'd managed to scare the widow, and I just... All right, all right. Let's just... Calm down now. It's gonna be okay. There are two sacred principles that rule my life. The first principle is the love for my family. I do anything to protect them. The second principle, I never put my future in the hands of fate. I always play it nice and safe. And I would even add a third principle, or better yet, a rule. If anything threatens either of these two crucial principles, I take matters into my own hands. You see where this is going? For the first time, I got someone killed. Even though all I really did was rat him out. No, I... no, 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 I just... Stop I... interrupting me, Jimmy! It's not polite! Sorry. They're all the same. So rude! You know what? Let's leave it at that. You're going to give a message to that disgusting walrus Cassidy, aren't you? Yeah, 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 sure. Whatever you say. Yeah, sure, 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 sure. Good boy. What? 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 what, what, what what's the message? Oh, Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy. You still don't get it, do you? You are the message. Huh? Huh? <laughs> Come on. Wrap him up. Make sure Cassidy gets the message for breakfast, will you? I hope he chokes on it.
Got it. Hmm, where are you hiding, little fishy? Once again, you didn't get to hear the end of my story. Just where do you think you're going, putty cats? <laughs> Two sacred principles rule my life. The first is... The love I feel for my family. The second... Never leave destiny in the hands of fate. I always play it nice and safe. And I'd even had a third principle, or better yet, a rule. If anything threatens either of these two principles, you I take, take matters that... into your own hands. Seriously, what just happened? Two sacred principles rule my life. The, the love, love you I for feel your for. What is going on today? Two sacred principles rule my life. The first is. The love I feel for my family. The second... Never leave destiny in the hands of fate. I always play it nice and safe. And I'd even had a third principle, or better yet, a rule. If anything threatens either of these two principles, I take matters into my own hands. The first time that someone died because of me, even though all I did was rat him out, well, that guy ended up in the Hudson River, right off Pier 27. He's gotta be even wetter than that fish by now. <laughs> you should have seen his face. It's but interesting what comes to mind when you think you're about to die. Suddenly, all I could think about was how much I wanted a pet fish. You too, Bruce? Anyway, I was 14 years old, and I still dream about it. But as a widow, and his son. By then, I was adamant about buying a fish. But, but first... That was that. Never again. Nowadays, 
Whether it's me who pulls the trigger or not, I have zero regrets. What's more, I sort of enjoy it. His pupils are dilated, and there's a slight grin on his face. The bastard is enjoying himself. When a mob boss declares his love of family, it can only mean that A, he won't hesitate to ruin yours, and B, he's cheating on his wife. The guy never hesitates to pull the trigger. Even if I hadn't seen what he did to Jimmy, I'd know he's not bluffing. In case anyone had any doubts about who's the boss around here, I'll put my dirty feet on his luxurious table to prove that all of this is mine. I knew I had it in me to get out of that place alive.
No. O'Leary's wife is having an affair with Colbert? Should I serve this to O'Leary on a silver platter? Or threaten Colbert so he'll get me out of this mess? And, well, that's it, I think. <laughs> you know, Black Sad, I never made it this far. Congratulations, you're going in style. I didn't want to interrupt you because I respect you and your word. Colbert told me to come here. What? Me? No way! You did what? Colbert? When? Uh, well, uh... <laughs> yeah, remember? At that bar on 33rd and Main Street. Don't you remember that cocky drunk guy? Uh, no. He kept bragging about how he was banging another guy's wife. Oh? Oh yeah, weird times, huh? Yeah, and you congratulated me for finding Yale and saving your life. Several times! Then you assured me that O'Leary would thank me. Well, I didn't put it that way, but yeah. And then you told me to come here to ask the boss himself. Yeah, I think you deserve it. Right, Desmond? Oh, black sad, black sad, black sad. Thank you. And sorry for jumping to conclusions. First, you get a random beating from Wilson. And here we are. When you shared what you'd found in Yale's apartment, well, it made me sort of want to trust you. But as you well know, you can't trust anyone in this world. Take it. It's only fair. I want to bet it all on the fight. Ah, so you're a gambler after all. We listen, if you call it listening, to the sentimental romance. The word you're looking for is feel. Same difference. Anyway, go ahead. Place your bet. I bet it all on Yale. Oh, Black Sad. Aren't these odd hours to pay me a visit? Your message was important, but certainly not urgent. It could have waited until tomorrow, don't you think? We cats and wolves hunt at night. I wish I was a noir fiction writer. At this very moment, I could write a couple of pointed, ironic remarks for the narrator to recount what I just lived through. The dark, crooked alleys of New York reminded me of the state of my own soul. Hmm. No. Fall loomed over me with the fall struck me with the full force of my long-lost youth. Nah, not that. Fall descended over me with the full weight of a guilty conscience. God, that's worse. He wants him alive! Uh. 
I felt fall seep through my bones like the pain of a good beating. <laughs> Mediocre, but appropriate. Against all odds, next morning I got up bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. And I had my kind, unknown assailants to thank. The beating had taken its toll, but for the first time in months, I had slept like a baby. Oh, come on, Helen, focus! All right, take five. We'll work on that double backhand later. Mr. Blackmore, what can I do for the FBI? Actually, the real question is, what don't you want the FBI to do to you? <laughs> Quick to thread, are we? Not that I'm not flattered, mind you, but I'd appreciate if you were a bit less vague. Maybe if we could speak in private? Alec! Coming! You've got four minutes, Mr. Blackmore, so... Make them count. We know about you and Desmond O'Leary. Wow. The FBI sure knows what it's doing. So, out of the 100 million Americans who know about that, who did you extort to get such highly confidential information? The thing is, well... <laughs> you see, I'd love to wipe out that part of my past, but whatever. Do you have any regrets? Ads pay more than trophies. Can you believe it? Being associated with such a shady character can only damage my reputation. Trust me, never get involved with a married man. They say you're currently involved with Al Stone, the boxer. Is that correct? Wow, your sagacity never ceases to amaze me. Don't beat around the bush. We know why you're with him. Oh, so you like his biceps too. Desmond O'Leary asked you to seduce Stone. Why? What? No, I met Al by chance at a party. A party hosted by Desmond O'Leary. No, that can't be. No one is that shrewd. Not even him. Damn, I hate that bastard. We're aware of at least six rigged games during your first year as a professional player. And? You won all of them. <laughs> Are you trying to offend me? I give my all on the court. I can't be held accountable if my rivals don't do the same. Go interrogate them. In any case, now I know why you mentioned O'Leary. What do you really have against him? And don't say illegal gambling. We've got reason to believe he's working with the Chicago mob. This isn't just illegal gambling anymore. It's organized crime. I'm serious, Miss Moore. America can't afford to let anyone shake its foundations like that. And America's sweetheart can't afford it either. Help us out. Talk to us. And why should I, Mr. Blackmore? What do I stand to gain or lose? The FBI always returns a favor. Oh yeah? Are they gonna rig my games? This is actually quite simple. One lucky gal. You have a light, sir?
the pearly white teeth of someone who barely smokes. Am I making her nervous? Damn. I'm almost out of fluid. Want to know my trick? Go down to start, then up with it, and then down again. Almost. Don't worry, I'm not making any assumptions about your masculinity. Will I get to smoke today? Will I get to smoke today? Thanks. I don't know what you want me to say. You're trying to frame O'Leary, perhaps rightfully so, but I think you're barking up the wrong tree. Believe me. If I had the slightest idea. Come on, Helen. <sighs> Time to work on your backhand. Let's go. <sighs> Do you smoke? Nice meeting you, Mr. Blackmore. Did you bring my water? America's sweetheart gave you her cigarette? Dear God, she has the hots for you! I can't believe you said good old weekly to investigate that stupid walrus while you were hanging out with Helen Moore herself! So, what do you say, you and me, we change places next time, huh? Your turn. Now tell me, what did you find out? Ah, you're gonna love this. You ready? I've got news, but I happen to also have a pla- uh. Black Sad. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Black Sad. Huh? Oh, Mrs. Colbert. That's nice, but I don't know why you're thanking me. Are you kidding? Remember how I doubted him, but you made me change my mind? If he had suggested to take me to Niagara Falls when I still suspected him, I would have thought it was just a cover. Or worse still, a way to clean his conscience. Well, I only did my job as honestly as I could. Enjoy your marriage. I hope you and your husband are happy. But what just happened? Is there anything you didn't tell me? Maybe. But now it's your turn. Tell me about Cassidy. Uh, 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 Come on, spit it out. I, I didn't find anything suggesting that Cassidy had anything to do with Dunn's murder, but... That's quite the tale. But I know Cassidy will be playing poker tonight with one Howard M. Farnham II, a Texas tycoon looking to get his claws on the boxing business. I also know that he and Cassidy have never met in person, and that Farnham, who's staying at the Balford Hotel, hasn't left his room. Apparently, he spent the night with three bottles of bourbon. So, here's my incredible plan. I'll go to the hotel. <laughs> I'd knock him out. Huh. And then, take his place in the poker game. That way, I'll get Cassidy talking. What do you think? Incredible, right? Huh? Huh? Uh -huh. Didn't we agree that you would handle Helen more while I dealt with Cassidy next time? No?
Good afternoon, Mr. Farnham. What's going on? Allow me to introduce myself. I'm John Blackmore, director of the Balford Hotel. We'd like to make our distinguished guests feel welcome. Please accept this small token of our appreciation. Oh, sure. I was fixing to leave, but I guess them monuments ain't going anywhere. <laughs> well, come on in then. Getting in Farnham's room was easy. Earning his trust was another story. But I always have an ace up my sleeve. Blackmore? You okay, partner? The best way to earn someone's trust is to make them believe they've earned yours. And sometimes, the best way to fake it is to tell the truth. I... I don't know where to begin. The world is falling to pieces. And so am I. Everywhere I look, I see corruption, lies, and filth. New York is nothing but a landfill. You Yankees can't get worked up. Down in Texas, we got them damn Catholics from Mexico. But sure as hell, there's a way to deal with it all. One of the tricks of this trade is to be wary of the biases we all have. They cloud our judgment and blur the person in front of us, painting them with the shades of our preconceived notions of who they should be. But every once in a while, you run into someone so locked in personality that they can only be regarded as a stereotype. Farnham was a disgrace, not only to himself, but to Texas and the entire human race. To think I had to impersonate him. I wish I was like you. You seem so content, so free of burdens. Stop right there, partner. You think this old dog don't have ticks? Let me tell you something about my first wife. Woo-wee! Once I had gained Farnham's trust, The hard part was deciding what I needed to know to become him and not get myself killed. What can I do for you, sir? I'm here to play me some poker. You got the wrong place, sir. Did you miss the barbershop sign above the door? You have a good evening, sir. Wait, uh... uh. The hard part was deciding what I needed to know to become him and not get myself killed. What can I do for you, sir? Howdy. My name's Howard M. Farnham II. Okay. Should I know you? What can I do for you, sir? Farnham was one hell of a drinker. I had to get the information out of him before he drank himself unconscious. Otherwise, I'd have to find that information myself. Not even a Bible. At least it's comforting to know that when Farnham drinks too much, his female companions have less of a hard time. They smell like a party.
You have a good evening, sir. Wait, uh... The hard part was deciding what I needed to know to become him, and not get myself killed. What can I do for you, sir? Farnham was one hell of a drinker. I had to get the information out of him before he drank himself unconscious. Otherwise, I'd have to find that information myself. Ding Dong? Interesting name for a town. Now me say last time. Oh, no. please, come in. Of course, I remember you. Take a seat. my question. How much does it cost to get yourself a clean Vietnamese shade? Then sure enough, booze put the nail on the coffin of my first man. You know, the wife that caught me cheating with the maid. My second marriage too. You know what I did to her daddy? Same old, same old with several mistresses. So I decided to stick to my guns and only deal with hookers. Even if I did end up <laughs> marrying some. <laughs> I feel you, Mr. Farnham. So I'm going to be honest with you. I spent all my savings on poker. And if I had any money left, I'd spend that too. Poker's not the trouble. It's the play with no bills in your pocket is the trouble. Oh, trust me. I had plenty of bills. Come on now. You ain't got a pot to piss in, son. I just paid ten years worth of your salary, fixing to play me some poker, and that's no more than petty cash to me. Petty cash, to be honest. I asked you how much. Of course they gave me my receipts. What do you think I am, boy? Wait, I'm, I'll, I'll show you. I, I gotta get somewhere. Just a sec, I'll get it. I, I just, just put it over, over. I think he's, I'll be right back. <laughs> Ding Dong? Interesting name for a town. Farnham's address book. Who knows what kind of shitty characters are in there?
I told you, nothing more than petty cash. Never given a second thought to them small numbers. And you never will. <laughs> Petty cash, to be honest. I asked you how much. Of course they gave me one of the seats. Do you think I am, boy? Wait, I'm, I'll, I'll show you. I got it somewhere. Just a sec, I'll get it. I, I just, just put, put it over, over, I think he's, uh, I'll be right back. Barnum's a dress book. Who knows what kind of shitty characters are in there? I told you, nothing more than petty cash. Never given a second thought to them small numbers. And you never will. <laughs> <laughs> Petty cash, to be honest. I asked you how much. Of course they gave me one of the seats. Do you think I am, boy? Wait, I'm, I'll, I'll show you. I, I got it somewhere. Just a sec, I'll get it. I, I just, just put, put it over. No matter how superficial someone may seem, there's always a way to win their heart. I told you, nothing more than petty cash. Never given a second thought to them small numbers. And you never will. <laughs> Petty cash, to be honest. I asked you how much. Of course they gave me one of the seats. Do you think I am, boy? Wait, I'm, I'll, I'll show you. I, I got it somewhere. Just a sec, I'll get it. I, I just, just put, put it over, over. I think he's, uh, I'll be right back.
This will surely imbue me with the Texan spirit. Why didn't you just say you had the receipt in your pocket? I'm almost certain, but tell me, who told you to come to this barber shop? Let me tell you a little secret about my first wife, sonny boy. When I met that woman, she had no manners, no money, no who in the hell? Find him. My God, if it ain't the hero of the day. With this and that bolo tie, I'll really look the part. <laughs> it's not going to be easy to sound Texan, but I'll give it my best shot. I probably don't need to imitate his gestures during the game, but it certainly wouldn't hurt to try. I'll be damned. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Knowing sure fine, up. the owner of this bra only came here for business. Anyway, Kenny, thanks for fixing the game with Cassie. <laughs> God bless you, brother. <laughs> Craziest goddamn Texan in New York. My good old friend Kenny. Craziest goddamn Texan in New York. You know how many Kennys there are in New York? Kenny who? So besides when and where the game will be, the password, and the money Farnham dished out. What else do I need? Ding Dong? Interesting name for a town. Not even a Bible. Luckily, there was only one Kinney in Farnham's address book, Kinney Eeks, residing at... Cornell Plaza, Manhattan, stunning penthouse. I'm not surprised. Mr. Eeks has excellent taste. Do you happen to know what he asked for the last time he was here? They smell like a party.
Don't tell me, Billy Bob. This here is my new friend Father. Am I right? Show sure up, but your slasher friend sure could learn how to treat his customers. Hey, Billy Bob, come on. This guy's a good guy. He's one of us. My apologies, sir. Hey, come on. Let's get in there before they finish all the bourbon without us. I haven't frisked him yet, sir. I don't think that'll be necessary. Mr. Farnham here, he's an honest Texan. And I'm sure he'll hand over his weapon if we ask him to. Right. No matter how superficial someone may seem, there's always a way to win their heart. It'll be my pleasure. Welcome, gentlemen. Chips are on the table and guns are in the safe. Now, we got a lovely night of poker ahead of us full of smoking and bourbon. So let's get started. Take a seat, Mr. Farnham. Let me introduce you. To my right, wearing gray boxes and weighing in at 140 pounds, the owner of Pink Vice, the largest meat market in all of Manhattan. In other words, a real son of a bitch. No offense to the women he exploits. Our reigning champion, Oswald Quince. A title I aim to keep, provided our new contender here doesn't interfere. <laughs> Sorry, partner. You ain't got a chance in hell. But look at it this way. You're fixing to learn new tricks. <laughs> For better or for worse, I only need one trick, playing well. The truth is that our friend Farnham owns the largest and, I dare say, most entertaining establishment in Texas. Really? So we're colleagues then? Yeah, you wish, Quince. He owns a casino. Damn. And it's not even in Austin or Dallas. It's actually in a little town called, uh, uh, yeah, what was it? Darn it. I, I looked it up the other day. It had a funny ring to it. I, I hate it when this happens. I thought they moved all Texan casinos to Vegas. Where gambling is legal. You mean Ding Dong, Texas? <laughs> ding Dong! That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Who'd ever think of a name like that? <laughs> Well, casino or no casino, let's just hope he doesn't keep as many aces up his sleeve as the late Ventimiglia, huh? Amen. To my left, wearing brown boxes and weighing in at 396 pounds. Frank, show some respect, huh? The hospitality tycoon, Polly... Polly... Tycoon? I just own a small bar with pool tables. Clients drink close to nothing and play even less, but certain business transactions just couldn't happen anywhere else. Damn it, Paulie. Why don't I know your last name? Because they took it away from me. You have no idea how good my ex-wife's lawyer is. <laughs> Women. They even take our damn names. Too much, Polly. When you're done sightseeing, why don't you drop by La Iguana for a game of pool? And I'll buy you a drink. But I have to warn you, my clientele isn't crazy about furry fellas such as yourself. Thanks. I love me some pool. Perfect. It'll be my pleasure. You're looking to start your own pool business, Farnham? 
This guy here wants to start a boxing association in Texas. And guess who he's turning to for advice? To be honest, several things got me worried. So I'd be much obliged for any counseling. So, what worries you? Those there athletes hooking up with each other, like Al Stone and Helen Moore. I see you subscribe to What's News. Yeah, my star boxer, the reigning champion. He's having an affair with America's sweetheart. Hey, I got nothing against those two idiots falling in love. Don't get me wrong, but it's taking a toll on his performance. I don't think he'll lose against Yale, but I'm starting to worry a bit. Billy, Ma, bring out the bourbon. We're drying up here. I'll deal with a fresh deck, of course. We respect traditions in this establishment. Poker is as boring as it is simple. All you need to do is read people's faces. And even the worst detective has that trick up his sleeve. The real issue is knowing what to play for when there's much more than just money at stake. Damn it! What game? How many games have you won, Farnham? Mark my words. Farnham will be calling his wife before the night is over. Ha! Oh, hey, hey, hey! By the way, did you guys hear about Kenny's wife? Pretty tragic, huh? What happened? Oh, plain bad luck. Hey, but Farnham, I'm, I'm sure you know more about it than I do. Anyway, Kenny, thanks for fixing the game with Cassie. <laughs> God bless you, brother. <laughs> Craziest goddamn Texan in New York. And the poor fellow's already got enough on his hands now that his wife. Women just gotta have their vices. Their... But she's in a rehab clinic now, hooked on tranquilizer. That's it, tranquilizer. Don't tell me women don't have their vices, do? Bring out the bourbon, Billy Bob. Come on, come on, give me, give me the bourbon. Maybe I spoke too soon when I said that poker is easy for a good detective. Let's just say it's relatively simple. There's always someone ready to surprise you. Relatively speaking. Well, I'll be damned! I don't believe this! What happened, Farnham? Beginner's luck doesn't last forever. And that's when the real champ comes in. I hope you're ready to lose it all, my friend. <laughs> Poor Farnham! Came looking to make big bucks in the city with his boxing and he's gonna lose it all with polka. <laughs> I hope your counseling will make up for it. Mm, yeah, so how can I be of help? Homicidal boxers like Bobby Yale. Ha! <laughs> That's some piece of news, huh? Hey, I don't know if he did it, but the real problem is that the fight against my champ Stone might not even freaking happen. The good news is that I've almost convinced the governor to let him out of prison on the day of the fight. Under police escort, that is. I bet you the audience gets a kick out of that. Rebel coaches like Joe Dunn. Oh, I see you've done your homework. That bastard wouldn't accept the most basic rules. For example, 
banning boxes from official competitions when the managers don't belong to my association. Hey, don't get me wrong, I'm sorry for his death. But if they ever find the murderer, I'd be glad to pay his lawyer fees. Come on, come on, let's steal another hand before Quince accuses us of trying to break his winning streak. Ain't gonna happen. Gentlemen, I suggest you never tell your sons about this game unless you want to lose their respect. Wait, you mean our sons actually respect us? <laughs> I hear you. There's no way to set boys straight these days. They don't even respond to a good old beating. I dare say Texan boys do respond to a good beating. Hey, careful, Quince. You're talking to a pro. So, uh, Kenny told me you had quite a house full. How many kids you got in that house full of yours? No. That son of a bitch was about to choke on his own vomit. If I'd been a communist, perhaps the vision of a millionaire choking on his own vomit would have made my day. Even so, I doubt I could have just stood there and watched him die. Unfortunately, I didn't break a sweat trying to save him. How many kids you got in that house full of yours? No, that son of a bitch was about to choke on his own vomit. If I'd been a communist, perhaps the vision of a millionaire choking on his own vomit would have made my day. Even so, I doubt I could have just stood there and watched him die. No, deserving or not, the man would live. something. I don't know how you deal with all of them. All oh, boys. Does it have to be now? Oh, never let Quince near one of your daughters. Come on, Folly. Children are sacred. I won't Cassidy. put a finger on them until they're 12. After that, well, <laughs> let's just say some men have needs that uh, can only be met by a young girl that age, uh, if you know what I mean. Are you all right, Farnham? There goes your winning streak, you sick bastard. Sooner or later, the police are gonna bust your ass. Quince. What the hell are you talking about? I bet you're as bad at hiding those poor girls as you are at keeping that ace up your sleeve. What? You lying piece of shit. Quince? Uh, don't believe a word he's saying, Frank. Don't you dare call me Frank. Billy Bob. It's 500 more. <laughs> Washing up is a deal. And good call, Farnham. I owe you one. Please, take that flying scumbag's tokens. And mine too, if you want them. I'm feeling generous. 
Hey, turns out the governor accepted my suggestion to let Bobby yell out of prison on the day of the fight. Hey, this is turning out to be the perfect night. If you decide to go ahead with your new venture, call me, Farnham. Your behavior at last night's game was utterly insulting. Never contact me again or I'll put an end to your pathetic life. If our common acquaintance should ask you about your business endeavors, tell him that boxing is too violent for you. Signed, Frank Cassidy. My own tracks would be covered the following morning when Cassidy read this note from Farnham. Dear Mr. Cassidy, Though I'm grateful for your kind help, last night's game made me realize that boxing is just too violent for a peaceful Texan like myself. I have decided to invest elsewhere. Yours sincerely, Howard M. Farnham II. Damn Texans. As for me, it was the first time in days that I had gone to bed without my daily being. A real shame. Nothing like a bruised body to help you to sleep like a baby. Maybe I should have given myself a beat. Black side.